On paper, The Goddess of 1967 looked like the worst type of Australian film. It was a road movie in the outback, a fish out of water story, featured a girl coming of age, and was pitched at the art crowd. So how did it end up being my favourite Australian film of all time? Largely because of director Clara Law, who made films such as Autumn Moon and Temptation of a Monk in Hong Kong, and then came to Australia to make Goddess of 1967 and the documentary Letters to Ali. And here she is. Clara, regardless of whether it's uh, a work of fiction or a documentary, I've noticed your films uh, tend to have a theme of entrapment. All of your characters seem to be confined, both metaphorically and physically. Is there something in your life that has informed this? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's what you feel, that is they are entrapped. I don't particularly think that, you know, I am, you know, after this or, or consciously was doing that. And if, and if it was there, it probably was because there was something that, um, that I felt. And maybe it's not entrapment. I think probably it's, uh, it's something that uh, they have to deal with. Finally, ultimately, you know, at some stage, at some time in their lives, and uh, it has to come out and it has to be dealt with. Otherwise, you, you can't move on. I suppose it's more like that. Most of the time, I, I was looking for something. Uh, and probably it's a feeling of uh, finding a place where I can call home. I suppose, you know, the fact that I've been moving from place to place and not feeling totally at home uh, in most of the places that I've been to, um, that probably, you know, that has to do with somehow with my growing up and with my feeling that, you know, nothing is, uh, is for long and you know, everything is transient. But probably also because this feeling of transience is also probably because, you know, when I was um, very young, um, I, you know, encountered uh, the loss of a, of a close relative. You know, my brother died, eldest brother died when I was um, very young. And, um, and it was uh, a shock probably, you know, to a kid to understand what that meant, you know, um, what, what not never coming back, you know, meant. Uh, and then feeling that, uh, well, that means that in life things don't really stay as you think they would. And I think, you know, that's a very, very strong, is a very strong impact on me and that's a thought that stays with me and a feeling that stays with me all the time. Like, you know, whenever I feel a little bit happier, I would think, oh, <laughs> it's not going to stay, you know. It's going to just, you know, it's all going to be very fleeting. And that, um, that is something that I feel all the time. You're not a very uh, plot-driven filmmaker. You seem to be more interested in like, like mood and, and tone and that kind of thing, I guess. Um, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but do you think about the audience when you're making a film? Do you think about what I do. you do? I do. Does that compromise your intent to a certain degree? Compromise. I think I, I don't think that the audience is something that is very mechanical. I just think of you know they are the, out there, you know, as kind of a listener or someone that uh, would probably want to interact with me if, or with the with what they are seeing. Uh, and I don't treat them uh, as some something that is um, you know um, lifeless or, or, or inactive or, or stupid or whatever. I think you know I probably respect each and every one of them or I think that if they are the audience that would watch my film that uh, they are supposed to be someone that's uh, intelligent and thinking and or have feeling or is emo you know have emotion and and or you know the film somehow would awaken something that's uh, in there that um, that I, I'm sure that is in every one of us but uh, may because you know of the pressure of uh, you know life or whatever that um, it uh, probably was would be hidden uh, and that you know at some point in life you know the film or the or a book or whatever would uh, awaken it and 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 so and, and mix uh, something that can be you know uh, mix them feel or think or in or be inspired like what I feel when I would be reading a good book or have seen having seen a good film or that kind of thing and that's what I my my um, what's driving me 
yeah. you know, uh, what makes me want to continue to make films. Because, you know, I'm sure that there are so many products out there, you know, uh, it, 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 I, I, I don't need to be there to be making one of those, you know. And for me, you know, filmmaking is very consuming, it's my life, it's actually my life. Uh, and I can't, you know, not do the things that I think is, uh, is uh, relevant to me, at least. And I think mood and tone and the story and uh, characters, they are all uh, part of filmmaking, part of a film, you know? And I can't think of a film that I like that I like only because of the story. You know, if I like a film, if I love a film, I love it because, you know, it, you know, uh, embodies, you know, to me, all of those things, you know. I think mood uh, tells us more, probably, you know, about some, something that is, uh, that, is, um, that is worthwhile than, say, let's just a story. Interview over! Commercial break!